if you can tell us about your you know, initiatives that you're working on. So, uh, initiatives that we are working on uh, at GenPact, I mean, there was obviously as a large company, we do work on a bunch of things, but two or three big ones. One is what we call the uh, pre-trained accelerators, which I just spoke about, which is how do you modularize AI so that you can go and drive speed and kind of value much more efficiently and fast. Uh, we are also focused a lot on uh, what we call full stack analytics, both right from uh, master data management, data layer, to domain specific analytics, to AI, how do you kind of bring the whole thing together? Uh, and uh, we are also focused a fair bit on uh, data literacy and, and how, do you, how do you make sure people, with the, and, and the analysis that is coming out, that people are able to consume it, uh, both internally for us, but also with our clients. Uh, so what value do you think uh, you know, uh, the AI and analytics is creating for businesses? So a wide range of value. Uh, I mean, in, in some ways, if you really think about what, what AI and analytics do, is they actually help you make decisions either faster or in a more sophisticated way. So like whether you choose risk or whether you choose something in finance or you do choose something in, uh, in, in a supply chain, it's about how do I make the decision-making process in business faster because I'm able to read documents uh, in an automated way compared to uh, humans doing it, or am I able to go and figure react to uh, my pricing changes to my supply chain faster? Uh, if that 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 speed mm. is a big power part of AI, and the second is sophistication. They're like there are only when there are some things that are uh, like a price change uh, or a review change on Amazon change, changes the demand pattern. There are like 500 of the variables that go in there. How do you kind of be a lot more sophisticated because humans won't be able to compute as mm -hmm. much of uh, the sophistication, all the correlations that, are, that needs to be done. So it's both the speed and sophistication mm -hmm. in every angle of business decision is, is going to get influenced. Sure, uh, so what roadblocks do you see? Like when, when we see uh, the adoption of uh, AI in the enterprise, what roadblocks could be there and what can organizations do you know, to expedite the adoption of uh, these technologies? Two or three roadblocks. One, I think, created by uh, the practitioners themselves, I think, is a little bit overhyped. Okay. Uh, so the expectation is sky high, and some of the technology and talent and process are not ready. So things have to kind of catch up to that. Uh, that's good up for the first roadblock. I think the second roadblock is I think it has become a lot more technology focused com uh, compared to I think where it should be a lot more domain and data com mm -hmm. combination focused that will drive more value. Sometimes we get em enamored by technology for the sake of technology. So that becomes a roadblock. And I think the third thing is fundamentally when you're talking about decisions, it means someone has to do things differently. So there is a change management component around it, right? Because someone was doing X and now they have to do Y. And, and that normally is not a technology issue that's a kind of managing humans and kind of, it's, it's a leadership and it's a change management issue. Uh, that always will be a roadblock that you have to be thinking about. Mm. So uh, what new trends are you seeing when we, when we talk about AI in the enterprise? What new trends do you see and uh, you know, what advice would you have for organizations to you know, leverage uh, AI? So the, uh, the, from a trends perspective and or the advice that you, would, you, you, you asked about, uh, Normally it is this kind of the same thing or any newer technology, start small, but have scale in mind. Right? Sometimes we start a lot of small things, but we don't think about how we'll actually scale it. And second, think of it as a transformation like any other transformation you will think about, uh, which will have uh, components around technology and data, but it will also have components around governance and processes. It will have components around talent, organization, and the culture aspects of it. Think more holistically. That's that's what I would advise. Yeah, and so uh, you know, there's also like a skills gap in this industry. So how can organizations, you know, close this skills gap? Uh, I think skills gap is in at, at two three levels, right? There's a skills gap uh, in some ways. The core technical skills gap, I think it is. It yeah, there is a gap, but I think that is getting addressed much faster. The gap around the hardest gap is what we call people who understand domain and who understand technology together. We call them bilinguals. Sure. That's a huge gap. I think it's a, it's a more in, uh, increasing gap there in that space and that, that's kind of uh, the hard one to kind of go and focus on. And the third part of it is the, the consumer gap, which is like once the, the analysis is out, how do you, it's get consumed mm -hmm. in the industry. So those are the three kind of gaps that has to be addressed. Yeah. And uh, what is your roadmap for 2020, you know, in terms of technology innovation? How do you see it going? Uh, our roadmap, as I said, is kind of the same set of three things. We will kind of, the, on the, in our chosen domains, we will go even deeper. Mm. 
focus on some of the pretend accelerators that we are building out. We will continue to focus on the data engineering layer even more because we see that as a, if, without the data there is no AI. Uh, so that, that I think is going to be there and we are going to continue to focus on uh, managing change and driving organizations through change and, 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 and have a much more advisory led approach towards it. So all those three are big. Uh, finally, what tips or advice would you have for uh, professionals who are you know, starting out in data science uh, in this field? No, number one is uh, don't be enamored by just the technology. Mm. Uh, the domain, go and choose an industry, choose a domain and go deeper. Mm. Right? And that is what will differentiate you as a data scientist or as an AI professional more than learning just the technology component. Sure.